I am in, proud to introduce Taiwan Ambassador H.E.B. Kim Chow. Will you please give her a round of applause and welcome her? Thank you, uh, Karen, for that kind introduction. And also thank you uh, to the Honorable um, Chair uh, Stuart Adams for hosting uh, this wonderful event here in the great state of Utah. Uh, I'm so honored uh, to be able to be here in person to use this occasion, express my gratitude uh, to so many of you, to ALEC, and to the so many outstanding freedom-loving legislators around the United States for your friendship and support for the bilateral relationship with my country, Taiwan. And there are a number of specific items that I do want to highlight in terms of our gratitude to all of you. First of all, I want to thank ALEC for awarding my president, Tsai Ing-wen, with the International Pioneer Award for Leadership, highlighting her commitment to free markets and also to fighting for democracy. I think this is an honor not only for the president of Taiwan, but it is also recognition of the freedom-loving people of Taiwan and our determination to keep Taiwan free. I often say that you are living in the land of the free. We are living on the island of the free. I also want to thank Alec for including in your model policy last year the agenda of supporting a bilateral trade agreement with Taiwan. Bilateral trade with Taiwan is in the interests of both our countries. For us, it will help us diversify from over-dependence on the Chinese economy. I think this necessity has been highlighted, especially during COVID, where very often we are vulnerable to dependencies on China, whether it's on the provision of PPEs or for other supplies that go into our pharmaceutical and medical device supply chain. What we want to do is work among like-minded democracies that share the respect for international property rights and playing by global rules and scientific standards. Mainly, we also believe that is, it is only in societies that respect the freedom of speech where true innovation can propel technology that advances human progress instead of technology that is abused and used for surveillance and controlling their people. So in the spirit of thanking you for supporting Thai relationship in trade and economic ties with Taiwan through your model policy, I also want to thank the many of you who have signed up on the letter outside uh, addressing the White House in advancing that appeal to take action in supporting trade with like-minded democracies like Taiwan. I also want to thank many of you who have passed resolutions in the various state legislatures in support of the friendship and partnership with Taiwan. Now, I'm an ambassador now. I work in Washington, D.C., but I used to be like you. I came from a legislature in Taiwan. I understand that all politics are local. And when we go back to our constituents, we want to deliver on economic progress. We want to deliver on the common values that we share. And I want to say that although Taiwan, you know, we're in the state of Utah now, our size is only about 15% the size of Utah. But we are the eighth largest consumer of American agricultural products in the world. <laughs> Which means, per capita-wise, each Taiwanese citizen 
is the second largest consumer per capita wise of American agricultural products, just second to Canada. So we love American agricultural products. We also love American technology that is based on ingenuity and innovation in an environment of freedom. We are also fans, and of course, we depend also on American energy exports uh, that help propel our economy and our industry. So this is a bilateral partnership that reinforces our strengths and we help each other. Let me give you another concrete example. We just heard from the Senate president from the state of Arizona. Now Taiwan's semiconductor company, TSMC, is now working on a $12 billion investment in Arizona to produce semiconductor chips. In recent decades, Taiwan has purchased high-end manufacturing equipment from the United States, and we've used that equipment to make chips in Taiwan, which we sell to your auto industry suppliers. Your automakers make the cars and sell them back to Taiwan. So isn't this a mutually beneficial and reinforcing partnership? And it would be even better <laughs> if we could ensure that in Taiwan, as we are a freedom-loving society, we keep Taiwan as a democracy. So in addition to supporting our trade, thank you, partnership, I want to thank so many of you for also supporting the defense partnership as well as the political relationship that is based on our common values of freedom and democracy, as well as our common interests in ensuring the peace and stability of the Indo-Pacific region, as well as the prosperity of both our economies. Taiwan stands on the front line of confronting the Communist Party of China. We are under daily coercion on the political level, economic level, as well as militarily. And the United States has always been the most reliable friend and partner of Taiwan as we are confronting coercion from the CCP. You know, when I first started out in politics, Taiwan was just holding our very first ever presidential election, and that was in 1996. And China responded to our very first election by firing missiles against Taiwan. They have a very low anger threshold. They tend to be upset about everything we do, about our existence, about beating their athletes in the Olympics. <laughs> but I think what's most important is that we work together to preserve our democracy. It's not only important for the people of Taiwan, it is important for all the freedom-loving people in the world because the Chinese Communist Party has a narrative. They claim that democracy is not suitable for Asian people. That is a lie, that is false, and Taiwan is living proof of that. So thank you again for your steadfast support for Taiwan, and we look forward to working with all of the state legislatures on continuing to advance our economic partnership in so many ways. We also look forward to working with you on educational exchanges for all the young people of your schools and your universities around the United States who are questioning the presence of the Confucian Institutes and the way the Chinese government exercises censorship and surveillance on their students. Taiwan is your best alternative for learning the Chinese language in an environment where the young people can exercise their full freedom and tweet whatever they want without the risk of going to jail. So we have a lot of work to do, and thank you again to Alec and such strong enthusiasm for this partnership that continues to be so meaningful for democracy, for freedom, for our values, as well as for our interests. Thank you again from Taiwan. <laughs>